Hello, my name is Jared Skeens and welcome to the Zoom Room. Today we want to look at Pure Maths 3, iterations and vectors. Again, I put those two together into one unit. We're looking at part three and we're on vectors. And in this uh, a video of vectors, we want to focus on the dot product and the unit vector. So in part two, we also looked at uh, magnitude and uh, we looked at uh, 3D, 3D vectors and how to calculate magnitude. So in this one, we want to look at dot product and uh, unit vectors. So the dot product is actually in your formula sheet. So if you have a formula sheet from Cambridge uh, handy, you can look at it. It's at the very end of the pure maths formula section uh, and uh, you'll see a little section there for vectors and it gives the dot product. Dot product is also called the scalar product. So it kind of depends on what term your teacher uses. I use dot product simply because it has a dot in it. Uh, so with the dot product, uh, it's not just multiplication. It's actually a, a little bit of a process here. So this is the dot product formula. So you have two vectors, A dot B. And again, this dot is not uh, simply the dot from multiplication. So it's implying something here, but it is our dot product equals the magnitude of A, that is vector A times the magnitude of vector B times cosine of the angle, the angle being the angle uh, between the vectors. So this formula is used in several different ways. You're gonna see how it's used in the Cambridge examples, but mainly it's to determine what the angle is between the vectors. So most of the time, you're gonna be solving for the theta here, which means that you need to be able to uh, rearrange the formula, solve for theta. So A dot B divided by magnitude of A times magnitude of B, solve for theta, you do the inverse cosine of A dot B over magnitude A times magnitude B. Now, we learned how to do the magnitude in the previous, um, uh, in part two. Also remember that the examples for these come from uh, the pure mass one, because in the old syllabus, uh, this is still material that in the old syllabus was in pure mass one. Now in the new 2020 syllabus cycle, uh, all of this material is now moved into the P3 book. Uh, but as you practice it, you can have to go back to those, uh, the Pure Mass 1 for uh, examples for practice. So how to do the dot part? Well, if we start with our two vectors, vector A and vector B, and I've written them out two different ways. Here is the component form, and here is the column vector form. So in the component form, we have, this is our first coefficient of A with the I, our second coefficient of A with the J, our third coefficient of A with the K. Same thing for vector B, uh, first coefficient, second coefficient, and third coefficient for i, j, k. So this is in component form where i, j, and k uh, are unit vectors on the x, y, z axis. Then uh, usually I prefer to write them when I'm doing math specifically. Uh, the column vectors are a little bit more math friendly. So I, I like the column vectors a1, a2, and a3 column vector for vector A and B1, B2, B3, the column vector for B. And notice this dot in between, that is our dot in the dot product. So how does the dot product work? This right here 
is how to do the dot part of the dot product. So this is the complete formula right here. This is the formula that's in your formula sheet. This one is also in your formula sheet, but this one is only telling you how to do the left hand side of this equation. Okay, so all of this right here is how to do this part right here. So all you do, you do multiply, but it's more than just multiplying. We multiply each corresponding coefficient to the i's, j's, and k's, and then we add them up. So a1 times b1 plus a2 times b2 plus a3 times b3. Make sure you also pay attention to signs. You can't have negatives in here. So you multiply all those corresponding uh, coefficients of your i's, your j's, and your k's, or you just go across if you're multiplying it for a column vector, and then you add them up, and that value will be the left-hand side of your dot product formula. On the right-hand side, you have magnitude of A. Again, we uh, covered how to do magnitude in the previous video do magnitude of B, and then uh, usually you're solving for the theta, and the, uh, so you, then you can rearrange it so that you get theta by itself. Sometimes though, you are not solving for theta. There are times where uh, you use a particular characteristic, namely perpendicular lines or if your vectors are perpendicular to each other. Now if your vectors are perpendicular to each other, then that means that the angle between is 90 degrees. Uh, why is that significant? Because when you do cosine of 90 degrees, you get zero. So if you're dealing with perpendicular vectors or you see the 90 degrees, then that causes the cosine theta here to be zero. So this entire part just becomes equal zero. So if you have to show that the vectors are perpendicular, then all you need to demonstrate is that a dot b is equal to zero. That's all you have to do. If your a dot b is equal to zero, obviously magnitudes cannot be zero. Those are lengths. You're not going to have lengths of zero. So the only way you can get zero over here is if you have a zero right here. And the only way you get a zero right here is if you have perpendicular vectors. So they sometimes play off of that uh, angle, no pun intended, but they play off that angle uh, instead of actually solving for the theta itself. Um, and then we have uh, another thing that's important is you need to know whether you're solving for the acute angle or the obtuse angle. Most of the time, you're going to be solving for the acute angle, but there are times where you can end up with an obtuse angle. Notice A, B, C can be acute or the same, vec uh, same you know, lines here, A, B, C, could also be obtuse. So there's a couple of things to look for. If this value right here in the parentheses, if it is positive, well, cosine is positive in the first quadrant, it'll be acute. But if this value here is negative, well, cosine is negative in the second quadrant, it will be obtuse. So the sign of this fraction right here, positive or negative, can uh, or will determine whether it's a first quadrant or an acute angle or a second quadrant and an obtuse angle uh, for that. Also, you want to look at your diagram. If you have a diagram uh, and you're solving for an angle between vectors, if you look at the diagram and you might need an acute angle or you might need an obtuse angle depending on the shape of the 
diagram, then you need to keep that in mind. So if, if you end up, say, with obtuse and you need an acute angle, you just take 180 minus that. Same way the other way, if you have an acute but you need the obtuse, just take 180 uh, minus the value to get the other one. So uh, that is something you just want to keep in mind. Uh, most of the time, it doesn't cause a problem, uh, but you might uh, wonder why you have a negative uh, value over here. And that just corresponds to the obtuse angle over here. Uh, so we'll get into some examples of this. Now let's look at a unit vector. So a unit vector, this is the notation, a U with kind of that little, uh, it's kind of like a little uh, carrot key that you see on your uh, computer there. I think on your number six on your computer, you have that little carrot key. So it's a U for unit vector with a little carrot on top. And it equals, here's your formula, your vector u, now this is the direction of u. So remember your direction of u will be these three numbers if it's in uh, column vector form or component form. So that's the direction of u divided by the magnitude of u. So when you divide something by itself, you get one. And that's remember what unit means. If you uh, go to the store and you buy groceries, it usually gives the unit price. It just means the price per smallest uh, quantity of that partic particular product. So when you talk about a unit vector, you're talking about a, a length of one along the vector. So a length of one would only be a little section of the vector itself. And so there's going to be some times that you will see in the examples, both in this video as well as in uh, the next uh, uh, in the next videos that we use the concept of unit vector. So if you need to find the unit vector, it's just the direction of the vector divided by the magnitude of the vector. If you need to double check to make sure you did it right, just take your answer, find the magnitude of your answer. And if the magnitude of your answer is one, then you know you did it right, okay? So this is the concepts involved for dot product and unit vector. Now I'll set up for our first example. Okay, let's look at our first example here says use a scalar product. Now remember that's the same thing as dot product. It's uh, some people call it scalar product. Some people call it dot product. To find the angle GMA correct to the nearest degree. Now notice this is part two. In the previous video when we worked with 3D functions, we, we already did this. So it's the same problem. It's uh, summer 19. Uh, paper 11, number seven. Remember, this comes from the Pure Mass one, but in the new syllabus, it's moved to Pure Mass three. Um, so we already did this 3D um, uh, question part in the last video. We already found AM and GM. So notice it wants us to find the angle GMA. So the M, the middle letter is the vertex. So GMA, here's G up here, here's M and here's A. So G to M to A, that's an obtuse angle. So we need to expect to get an obtuse angle here, GMA. So that's what we're gonna work on. I'll take the values that we already found in our previous one. They're already on the board so that we don't have to do that again. So let's go back to the board and see what we have here. So uh, here again is our dot product formula, the scalar product formula. And it wants us to find angle GMA. Now it's, there's a common mistake that students make when they're doing this. And that is they'll go G to M 
and then M to A. You can't go straight like that. You'll end up with the incorrect answer. You either go from the outside in or from the inside out. So you can either do like this outside in, GM and AM, or you can go MG and MA. Okay, so either work from the inside the vertex out or from the outer point to the vertex. So here's AM that we got from uh, the previous video, the, the direction on how to get from A to M is three halves, four and five. And then here's the column vector from how to get from G to M, 13 halves, negative four and negative five. So I put it in column vector form because it's a little easier to work with mathematically. Uh, although in the previous video, we put it in component form. So now we wanna follow the formula. Uh, we also need the magnitude of both of them. So here's the magnitude for AM. And again, we did magnitude, uh, the concept of magnitude in the previous video. All you do is it's basically like the Pythagorean theorem where you square root each of the parts. So three halves squared plus four squared plus five squared, which is nine fourths plus 16 plus 25. And it's approximately 6.576. Then the magnitude of GM, 13 halves squared plus a negative four squared plus a negative five squared. Make sure those negatives get on the inside of the parentheses, especially if you're using your calculator uh, you're squaring the negative as well, meaning it comes out positive. So you get positive 16, positive 25. And that all comes out to approximately 9.124. So here is our dot product formula. 3 halves times 13 halves plus 4 times negative 4 plus 5 times negative 5. That's this left-hand side of the dot product equals then magnitude of the first one, 6.576, times magnitude of the second one, 9.124, times cosine theta. We bring that up here and rearrange it for cosine theta. So this left-hand side comes out to a negative 31.25 and divide by these two magnitudes, which when they multiply together, give you 59.999. And then take the inverse cosine of that, which is a negative 0.52084. And when you take the inverse cosine of it, it comes out to 121.4 degrees. Notice it's an obtuse angle. Notice that we had a negative value in our fraction and that when you look at the diagram, you indeed want the obtuse uh, angle there. So it fits with the diagram and our angle measurement is 121.4 degrees. So remember with Cambridge to take degree measurements to one decimal place. And this is how we do the dot product. So let me set up for the next example. Okay, here's our second example. This one is from summer 19, uh, paper 13, number six. We also covered this one in the previous uh, video. This says, use a scalar product to find angle F, M, N. So in the previous one, we had this 3D. Here's F, here's M, here's N. So you can see from F to M to N, this is an acute angle. So we expect a first, first quadrant answer there. And we already found MF, we already found FN, and we found MN in the previous uh, video. So now we're gonna take those and use the dot product or scalar product to find that angle that is in the diagram. So let's go back to the board. So it wants us to find F, M, N, find angle F, 
M N. So remember, you need to either go outside in or inside out. So in this case, went from the inside out because these are the ones that we already got uh, working with those vectors. So M to F and also M to N. So we go from the inside out or the outside in, but don't just go in a straight line, F, M, M, N. You'll, you'll get the wrong sign doing that. When you switch the letters, let's say I have M, F, if I want F, M, then that changes the signs, four, negative two, negative seven. So if you have a vector and all you want to do is switch the letters around, then remember when you go the opposite direction, it changes the sign, it makes a negative on your vector. So it changes the signs of all of your components. So we have MF and MN, MF and MN is, you know, uh, fits from inside out. MF, what we found in the previous uh, video when working with 3D vectors was negative four, two and seven, MN was negative two, one and seven. So the dot product of this will equal the magnitude of MF times the magnitude of MN times cosine of the angle. So the magnitude of MF is the square root of a negative four squared plus two squared plus seven squared, which is 16 plus four plus 49, which is the square root of 69. I just left it as a radical this time. The magnitude of MN is the square root of negative two squared plus one squared plus seven squared, which is four plus one plus 49, which is the square root of 54. So then carrying out the dot part of the dot product, we multiply negative four times, sorry, this is a negative two, negative four times negative two, plus two times one, plus seven times seven, equals the root 69 times root 54 cosine theta. Bring this up, get cosine theta by itself. Here we have 49 uh, plus two is 51, and 51 plus eight is 59 on the top, divided by these root 69, root 54 to get the cosine theta by itself. Inverse cosine, this fraction equals 0.9666, and the inverse cosine of that is 14.9 degrees. Again, taking our degree to one decimal place. That is that little angle from F to M to N on that three dimensional diagram. So there again, we see the working out the dot uh, product and I will set up for another example. Okay, here's our next example. Now, instead of coming off of a 3D diagram like our previous two examples did, uh, this one is uh, coming in from a, a little different context. So it's not coming off the 3D diagram. It says the position vectors of points A and B relative to the origin are given by OA. So we have six, negative two, six, negative six, and OB, three, K, negative three, where K is a constant. So in the first part, it says find the value of K for which angle AOB is 90. Okay, so this has to do with the dot product. I have an angle of 90, cosine of 90 is zero. So we're gonna work with this one with the dot product. Then there's another one, find the values, plural of K, for which the lengths of OA and OB are equal. So lengths deal with magnitude. So we'll work on that. And then the point C is such that AC equals to two CB. In the case where K equals four, find the unit vector in the direction of OC. So we get a chance to get to work with unit vector uh, uh, in this particular part, but we're gonna start with these first two here. So let's go back to the board, find the case where AOB is 90. Okay, so where angle AOB is 90, 
here is OA, except for negative two, negative six. There's OB, three, K, negative three. Remember, if you have a 90 degree, it's perpendicular. Cosine of 90 is zero. The right hand side of your dot product uh, cancels out. So it's the left hand side of the dot product set equal to zero. So six times three is 18, negative two times K is negative two K. Negative six times negative three is plus 18. We combine those and set that equal to zero. So move the negative two K to the other side, two K equals 36, divide by two. For this first part, K equals 18. Then in the second part, it says that find the value of K. So this is not, uh, they're not linked. Each one is separate. Uh, now we need to find K if the length of OA is equal to the length of OB. Length is magnitude. So the magnitude of OA is the square root of six squared plus a negative two squared plus a negative six squared equals 36 plus four plus 36 equals the square root of 76. The magnitude of OB is the square root of three squared plus k squared plus a negative three squared, which is nine plus k squared plus nine, which is the square root of k squared plus 18. These have to be equal. And so k squared plus 18 equals 76, which means k squared equals 58. So k equals, don't forget plus or minus, it does say find the values plural of k. So plus or minus root 58 and K therefore equals plus or minus 7.62 to three significant figures. Both of these values, uh, the only difference is the direction will be different, but the length will still be the same. This is asking for the lengths to be the same. The direction didn't really matter. And that's why it can be plus or minus. Now we'll move on to that third one, but I need to uh, erase first and uh, clear up some space. Okay, here we go with that third part. The third part of the question is the point C is such that AC equals two times CB in the case where K equals four. So that comes up here and makes us three, four, negative three. In the case where K equals four, find the unit vector in the direction of OC. So the unit vector of OC is what we're looking for. And it gives us this equation right here. AC is equal to two times CB, and it wants the unit vector of OC. At first, that might look quite confusing. How are you gonna get OC from AC and CB? Well break it down into the component vectors. So AC is the same thing as C minus A. Remember end minus start. So if you need the picture, if you remember vectors subtracting vectors, if you have A to C and here's O, then OA and OC have tail to tail vectors. And when you have tail to tail vectors, you subtract. So it's N minus start. So going from A to C is OC minus OA. OC minus OA, N minus start equals two times, again, N minus start, OB minus OC. So OC minus OA equals 2OB minus 2OC. Remember, we're solving for OC. So add these two over to here. Now we have 3OC, add the OA over there, equals 2OB plus OA. OB and OA were both given to us there at the beginning of the problem. Uh, OA was 6, negative 2, negative 6. OB was 3K and negative 3 but they told us for this particular part, K equals four. So we plug in the four. 
Now we just combine this with our uh, vector addition and multiplication here. So two times three is six, plus six is 12. Two times four is eight, minus two is six. Two times negative three is negative six, plus another negative six, make negative 12. Then don't forget to divide by three. So our OC then is four, two, and negative four, because we had to divide by three. This is the direction for OC. Now we want to find the unit vector in that direction. So we need to take the direction divided by the magnitude. So let's find the magnitude. The magnitude of OC is the square root of four squared plus two squared plus negative four squared which is the square root of 16 plus four plus 16, which is the square root of 36, which equals six. So we're gonna divide our direction by the magnitude. There are different ways you can show it. This one is using component form. Uh, you could have divided one six through here and get four six, two six, negative four six, reduce the fractions. You can do that. Uh, but uh, in, I believe in this mark scheme, they showed it like this, one over six times four I plus two J minus four K uh, in component form, whether it's component form or column vector form, doesn't really matter as long as your result is correct. So whether you multiply that one six through or not, doesn't really matter whether it's component form or vector for, uh, com, uh, column vector form, doesn't really matter either. Uh, this I think is what the mark scheme showed. Usually I try to keep the form the same as what the information was given. Although I think for this, they gave the information in column vector form, but I think the mark scheme showed component form. Like I said, as long as your final answer is correct, there's several different ways that you can show it, but this is, the unit vector. Now, I said, how do you double check? I mentioned double checking earlier. Well, if you had multiplied this through, you would get four over six, which is two thirds. Two over six is one third, and a negative four over six is a negative two thirds. So if we do the magnitude of this, which means the square root of this squared, that's four ninths, plus the square of this, that's one ninth, plus the square of this, that's four ninths. Well, guess what? That gives you the square root of nine ninths, which equals one. So if you can take the magnitude of your unit vector and get one, then that means your unit vector is correct. So this is just a different way of showing it. But if you do the magnitude uh, and you get one, then you know you did it right. Okay, so I'll set up for one more. Okay, here's our last example for this video. And here we have relative to an origin uh, at O, the position vectors of the points A, B, and C are given by OA is one negative three two, OB negative one three five, and OC three one negative two. So in this first part, we need to find A, C, and then in the second part, uh, M is the midpoint of AC, and we need to find the unit vector in the direction of OM. So we'll find the unit vector uh, of this OM, and then in the third part, uh, we need to find uh, the ang angle BAC. So of course, to do angle BAC, we have to find uh, A, B, and A, C in order to do that. So let's go back to the board here. Take it one step at a time. Here's the three uh, position vectors, O, A, O, B, and O, C. Remember position vector means it comes from the origin. They're written as column vectors here. Then it says find A, C. Remember end minus start. So AC can be found by taking OC minus OA. So three minus one is two, 
one minus a negative three is four, negative two minus two is negative four. So AC is only worth one point, quite uh, simple to find, but you need to remember that it's N minus start OC minus OA. For the second question, we need to find the unit vector of OM, the unit vector of OM, where M is the midpoint of AC. Now be careful on this. Just because it's the midpoint of AC does not mean you can just divide AC by two. So with midpoint, you need to add the ends and divide by two. So OM is the midpoint of AC. So it's three plus one divided by two, negative three plus one divided by two, and two plus negative two divided by two. So that gives us four divided by two is two. Negative two divided by two is negative one. Zero divided by two is zero. So this is OM. Then we need to take the direction and divide it by the magnitude. So the magnitude is uh, the two squared plus the negative one squared in the square root. And we get square root of four plus one, which is the square root of five. So we need to divide uh, this direction by the magnitude. So you can show it again, a couple of different ways. One divided by root five times two i minus j. So this is your i, j, k, two i minus j. So it's written in component form. Again, uh, you could also have two over root five minus one over root five and a zero would be the same thing. But your unit vector for OM. Then the third part says find angle BAC. So again, you either work towards the middle or outward from the middle. So I chose AB and AC. So AB is B minus A. So negative one minus one is negative two. Three minus a negative two is six. Five minus two is three. AC we have up here already. 2, 4, and negative 4. We're going to do a dot product so that we can find the angle. So the dot product between AB and AC is equal to the magnitudes times cosine theta. So the magnitude of AB is the square root of negative 2 squared plus 6 squared plus 3 squared, which is the square root of 4, 36, and 9, which adds up to root 49, which is 7. The magnitude of AC is the square root of two squared plus four squared plus a negative four squared, which is the square root of four, 16, and 16, which adds up to the square root of 36, which is six. So here we have seven times six times cosine of theta. So the dot product, two times negative two is negative four. Four times six is 24. Negative four times three is negative 12. So you multiply each of those and then add them up equals 42 times cosine theta. So our theta is going to be the inverse cosine. On the left-hand side, we have 8 divided by the 42. And our inverse cosine of 8 over 42 is 79.0 degrees. Again, uh, be careful here that you put the point 0. You need to go to one decimal point for your degree. And even though it's a zero, you still need to put it. So 79.0 degrees is the angle uh, of BAC. So there we've seen uh, the dot product used for finding angles. The dot product can be used uh, with uh, perpendicular lines because your theta is 90. Uh, if you're, if you're looking at a straight line, like A, B, C, all in a straight line, then you want to go with uh, your direction is the same and use that to help you. The only thing that might be different is the constant. In other words, you can uh, factor out a constant, but your direction, the basic direction should be the same. Uh, so some multiple of the same numbers. You can use that if you have a straight line. Uh, almost like slope, but I don't want to confuse you with slope. 
So I used the same direction for straight line, for perpendicular, used the dot product. And we looked at uh, unit vectors as well. We'll use unit vectors again in a later video as well. So I hope that this helps you with this part. And between video part two and part three, all of that material was previously in the pure mass one. It is now in the pure mass three. So the information that we go to in part four will start the material that was already in the pure mass three in the uh, old syllabus. So as always, thank you for joining me in the Zoom room. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.